Okay, so here we are with the software set up remotely. This is on my PC in the house here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to connect via um, a LAN connection um, remotely to the PC and the IC9100 in the shack. So here it is at the bottom you can see I've marked up the server that I want to connect to and to connect to the server simply just press the connect button and this will establish the USB audio and CIV data connections over the um, LAN. You can see here that it's telling me that I'm connected. Um, actually it's a, a little bit ambiguous because it actually says connecting when you're actually connected. It tells me the port it's connected on, the address, the user ID and the details about the line. So this is on the uh, connected on ADSL and it's also telling me a little bit about the uh, quality of the circuit i.e. there's no packet loss or there is a little bit of packet loss and also if there is um, uh, any kind of delay on the uh, connection. Uh, once you're connected um, then click onto the radio list and the radio list will populate automatically with the radios that are marked on the server. I actually have two servers marked here, one which is Nick's, one which is uh, my local one here. Um, ZL4 PLM IC9100 is the one in the shack and what I can then do is um, hit the connect button and that will connect the software and establish the connection. And um, already I received the uh, audio here. Um, the virtual serial port number um, is marked as 9 and um, that's actually set up in the settings here. Um, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to run up the uh, remote control and run the front panel. Again, we're going to look in the connect settings and I've got it set to IC9100. Because I'm using the remote utility already, you'll see that it's marked up the ZL4 PLM IC9100 in the list. So I select that, select the virtual COM port, not the local COM port, and then also set up the board rate. I set up the CIV address and also the um, audio device here, which is the USB audio device. Click OK and then click Connect. OK, now the radio is connected remotely. So this is across the LAN and the audio is coming in via the uh, remote audio device across the uh, network. And again, you can tune up and down. You can actually um, turn the preamp on and off, turn the AGC off. Everything works quite well, just as though you would sitting in front of the radio. And that's really um, as hard as it gets to do actually a remote connection. Um, the performance is very good. Uh, you can see the S meter working here and um, the band changes quite quick as well. Uh, band stacking all works okay and um, so for example change frequencies here and go down to uh, WWV and select AM and that's WWV. I can change the filters here um, and expand the band out to 10 kilohertz or down to 3 kilohertz. It's quite easy. Okay, so that's how you connect and um, what I'll do now is um, review some of the findings that we've found out about using the software on the internet, some of the things to look out for and um, a general overview of it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up a connection via the internet. Previously I was connecting to my IC9100 um, across the local LAN here. Um, one thing to note is that to set up a remote server um, you go into the server list here you'll need to add one and uh, put in a server description the IP address or the, the DNS name that you, you're targeting um, and this is where the DNS um, dynamic service comes into use you can put that name in there um, TCP port which is uh, UDP on 5001 and um, the user ID and the password which the person who set up the service will supply you. Um, I've already set these up and um, Nick's server is here so what I'm going to sh uh, show you here now is how it looks when it's all completed and to connect to the server just um, then highlight it and hit connect. Um, so what the uh, system will do is now negotiate a connection 
and um, you can see here the round trip time is somewhat larger than my <laughs> land service um, bearing in mind this is a round trip between um, New Zealand and Europe um, if you now click on the radio list you'll now see a list of the radios that are populated and um, the IC7000 here is uh, um, on Nick's um, system and you can see it's got a virtual COM port of 10 and um, if I just click on the settings there you can actually change the COM uh, virtual COM port number um, in there and also the uh, audio devices I've got this connected to um, uh, my speakers um, I'm just going to put that onto uh, my uh, headphones and um, the uh, modulation input is uh, the microphone and uh, I'll just save those you'll notice there also the settings um, for the uh, bit rates and um, bandwidths um, okay now that I've got that set up I'll just hit connect here and what this will now do is connect the radio and um, you can see that it's connected um, again it's a very strange message it actually says get connect rather than connected um, now the second part to the connection once you've established audio and the CIV data into the remote connection is to run the remote panel and again you use the remote control software but in a slightly different way this time uh, look at the connect setting page and you'll see that it's slightly different in that the remote utility um, is populated with the radio name uh, rather than not used. Again the model and uh, what I need to do is just change this slightly because we're now connecting to the IC7000 so what I need to do is just do that and now I've changed the model to 7000 the COM port still COM port 10 and I just click OK with that um, and to connect just click OK and away you go now we'll um, it'll establish a connection and um, allow me to control the radio um, across the network um, all of the features and functions work in a very very similar way um, as though you're on the LAN um, you'll notice here that the um, memory bank um, is um, somewhat different um, I can choose uh, jump up and down the memory banks and you can see the memory bank number changing here which is 18 um, and the bank number which is below it which is bank 2 and um, I think we've only programmed um, a couple of the uh, of the banks um, it's also okay to um, use the VFO um, so it's quite easy to uh, just click on um, the band name and again the band um, is band stacking so the band registers are all there and um, it's uh, very easy to change around the uh, features and functions. Now this is an ICOM 7000 so it is slightly different um, to the IC9100 um, you'll notice that the keyer is blanked out because the IC7000 doesn't support the remote keying um, I think this is to do with the CIV capabilities and um, I think that was updated with the IC7600 as well um, but I don't think the IC7000 supports it um, so that's really how you connect um, remotely across the internet it works just as well as it does on the LAN and um, it's quite easy to uh, to tune the radio uh, around using the same uh, same f uh, technique as uh, as it did on the LAN. It's a little bit slower, um, but not a huge amount. Um, one thing is to keep the board rate down on the CIV data. If you put it up too high, then you'll lose the um, the data and um, you'll get um, disconnects. Um, the audio across the internet is very good it's quite uh, a decent sound and um, I think you'll be quite pleased with the uh, the performance of this um, again the major um, factor about uh, connections and connectivity is all about internet um, bit rates so um, you really need to be running this on a broadband connection and um, one that uh, has a fairly good performance um, this link's running from Europe to New Zealand without any difficulties and over the last few weeks we've um, been able to uh, carry out quite a lot of um, uh, tests uh, fairly successfully and um, been quite impressed with it. 
So that's how we connect remotely. And uh, let's just now look at some of the overviews about what we found and um, just some comments about uh, the software performance. I've gained quite a lot of experience with radios over the internet over the last few months. Um, Nick, gm 4 OGI and myself have been playing with the Kenwood TS480 and the remote control package for that. We've also been playing with some of the hardware interfaces from Remote Rig and now we've also been playing with the ICOM package. I have to say out of all of them, the ICOM package is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. It's very easy to connect and set up and actually performs really, really well. The ability to send CW in, in the software package is quite a plus. The actual audio over the uh, IC9100 over the internet is really, really good. And I was very impressed to find that tuning CW signals, for example, doesn't lead to any dropouts or distortion. So I think you'll be pretty impressed with it as well. The one thing that I will say is you need a really fast internet connection. And I think this is where any of these systems over the internet will be let down. If you don't have a good internet connection, you'll find problems with the remote panel dropping out and disconnecting, and also find problems with poor audio. You can tailor this for di different types of internet connection, and that's contained in the software. But I think you will find that if you have a good broadband connection at home, you'll find no real problems. Actually, using the radio over the air is quite different to actually sitting in front of it. And you have to get used to use twiddling the uh, mouse knob and using the mouse buttons up and down to tune around. It's not quite the same tactile feel as sitting and tuning the VFO knob. Having said that, I find it very, very nice to be able to sit and listen to, say, uh, airband radio on HF while I'm actually sitting at my desk in the house doing something. So it's got a lot of pluses. One of the things I did like about the remote control package is that if you're using it via a USB cable next to the radio, it allows you access to much more memories and banks of memories than actually the radio front panel does. So that's quite a big plus. I know a lot of people have complained and said that the IC9100 should have had a colour display. Well, with the remote control software package, you've certainly got that. Overall, I've been very, very impressed with the ICOM software package. It's just gone through a new release, so if you download it, make sure you grab the update from the ICOM Japan webpage. That means you'll get the latest updates and upgrades in the software, of which there's been quite a few changes to it, and these really have improved the package itself. I can honestly say I can highly recommend the ICOM RSBA1 package. It's good not only for the IC9100, but also for connecting a lot of other radios. I've had my ICOM 7600 connected, IC7000 locally, and we've also had Nick's IC7000 connected as well. So it really, really is a very flexible package. There's a lot of other radios actually in the menu system as well. So it just supports not just only these few, but quite a few of the HF radios. And I would have a look at it if you're really looking to connect a radio across the internet and you own an ICOM. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I have making it. It's been really fun playing with the RSBA1 package over the last weeks, and Nick and I learnt a lot about how to set it up and fine tune it. We'll be doing plenty more videos as the weeks go by. There's still plenty to look at, the 23cm install and filter installs, and we're still waiting on Adam AB40J's review, which I'm sure will be very, very positive. So thanks for viewing this, and look forward to uh, doing some more videos for you.